Yo, what's up guys? This is the Edge Router Lite. We're going to configure dual one load balancing failover. ETH0 would be our local area network connection and then ETH1 would be our ISP connection one. Then ETH2 would be our ISP connection number two. Jump into my computer, let's do it. Okay guys, so first up, if you haven't configured a Ubiquiti or a Edge Router light before, you, uh, you need to set a static IP address on your network adapter, which is con uh, connected to your router. So because it cannot get an IP, there's no DHCP enabled by default. So I'll jump into that Ethernet that's connected to my Edge Router properties. Uh, scroll up and go to Internet Protocol version 4. You get to set a 192.168.110 and click on the submit mask it will automatically fill that one out okay okay close and then we can close that minimize so that we can get back to it later so i'll go to my browser type in the default ip of that edge router 192.168.111 and advance click on advance scroll up proceed 192.168.1.1 UBNT UBNT make sure to change that one yeah we're going to change that after we configure everything so router is in default config do you want to start with basic setup wizard nope let's just jump into the wizard and go for load balancing so here on the upper right corner then load balancing and here it's going to guide you through how you configure it now the first internet port is ETH0, wherein um, that should be my LAN. So I'm going to change this one with ETH1. DHCP automatically obtain network settings from the internet service provider. That is what we need. We do not have any static or PPOE. And second internet port, the same, that would be ETH2 and automatically obtain as well. The LAN port, which is set to ETH2, should be ETH0. Now, take note of the IP address. This is the default IP. I want to change this one with 100.1. Why? Why? Because one of my one port would be getting an IP address, which is 192.168.1 network. So it will be having a conflict and probably um, the edge router won't allow it so at the same time enable the DHCP server so that we're going to get an IP address from our router as well and last but not least we get to set the password okay that's good and we're sure with our configuration and apply the current configuration will be replaced and a reboot is required. New configuration to take effect. So I'll apply this one. I'm sure with that. Configuration has been applied successfully. I'm going to reboot and your network will temporarily be unavailable while your router reboots. Okay. Yes, I'm sure the system is in the process of being rebooted. While this is uh, going to a reboot, take note that my IP address is changed. So this is the default that is 192.168.1.1. I changed that one to 192.168.100.1. So I'm going to go back onto my adapter. And uh, if you recall, we have enabled DHCP on the router. So I'll just go ahead and obtain, obtain. Okay, okay, close. And then we're going to wait for the router to uh, basically get up and we should be getting an IP address from that. So we're going to wait from here. So we're not still getting that IP address. Well, maybe it's going to take time. So um, one way I do is kind of refresh this one, enable and disable it so that, you know, kind of unplug, replug, something like that. Okay, so we got an IP address already. That is 192.168.100.38. I'm going to close this one, close that, close that, close this one. Um, and we need to type in, type in 100.1. Advance, 
we get to proceed term u b n t we type in our password okay so you can see here we have that ip address we change and one and one two are currently disconnected and you can see the status here so first i'm going to connect um my um first internet connection and um you should be able to see this one green or activated so i'll plug that one and let's wait and it should get an ip address as well here there you go it's connected We'll basically wait for this one to get an IP address. Okay, we have an IP address that's 192.168.88.253.24. So what I'm going to do is CMD and try to ping the IP address 8.8.8, .8 .8, which means that 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. So we're going through that one, that's the IP address of Google. So we're able to uh, get in and we are using this. We're going to do a tracer 8.8.8.8. It will go through. So this should come up. So first, it will go to 100, that 100. This is that IP address. And it should jump into this router. Oops. Yeah, there you go. It jumped into this router here, this one, and then it goes outside. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, guys, is plug in my second internet connection. So I'll plug that. You should see the status turn up, colored. Currently down, you see it turned green, and we have a connected, um, this uh, connected uh, status here. We're going to wait for that IP address to pop right here. Okay, so we have 192.168.1.22. So if we try to, uh, since both are connected, we can actually see where the internet is going to flow. So I'm, I'm going to unplug ETH1, so that will go disabled. So you see it turned gray. So here it got disconnected. And I'm going to pop in that uh, um, CMD. I mean, yeah, there you go. And then the same, we're going to, uh, same, we're going to ping 8.8.8, ping 8.8.8.8. So we can ping that. We can ping that. And we can also do tracer, tracer 8.8.8.8. Okay, so while waiting for that, I'm going to maximize that. So 100, it went through this router, and then it should jump into 1.1. .1. That's this router, this path. Okay, and then there you go. It's going a different route. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to stop this one and kind of do a continuous ping so that we're going to try and unplug and unplug both internet connections so that we can see the failover effect of this um, edge router. So ping dash t 8.8.8.8. This is a continuous ping. So you can see it's continuously pinging that. And by the time I'm going to remove the, by the time I'm going to unplug, you can see it will turn gray at the status bar and it will show us a disconnected status here. This ping should go request timeout unplug okay so it's going uh request timeout i'm going to plug the middle that's our um, other internet connection and let's wait the status went connected we're not getting the ip address yet wait up so we have the IP address just popped in on the inter internet in, uh, on the interface. We're still waiting for the ping to show up. There you go. That took so long, man. So it's going through that path. 
I'm going to connect the second um, ISP. We're going to wait for that to pop up and then unplug the middle ISP or the first ISP we have. So that just came up. I'm going to unplug the um, first ISP, the middle one. So it will turn gray and it get disconnected. There will be a switching kind of thing here. So it went request timeout, but it should go back up again because it needs time to, you know, reroute those traffic going out from the router. Okay, we're back up. So that's basically the use of your failover or what we say uh, and a load balancing as well. So I'm just going to plug the middle one. So the router will take care of that um, failover. You don't need to go in, you know, uh, get it uh, back up. If you have any questions, guys, just drop a comment below. Let me know about it. And we're going to try to see if I can help you out. See you in my next video, guys.